I'd like to invite our next speaker onto stage, please, uh, Dr. Pete Myers, uh, who is the founder of Environmental Health Sciences, which is an NGO uh, that advances public understanding of environment and health. Uh, and uh, Pete, I read in your biography that on, I don't know, at a workshop sometime in the 90s, it was you that came up with the, the, the term endocrine disruptors. That's, that's correct. Wow, great. Well, I've been working on it ever since. The floor's yours. It's been quite a day. We learned a lot, had very stimulating talks like on Sophie's. Thank you, that was excellent. Um, I wanna put the chemical strategy for sustainability in a historical context you probably have not thought of. I think it is the Magna Carta of a sustainable society. If implemented as designed, and there's a big, there are big questions about whether that's actually gonna happen. If implemented as designed, it will be revolutionary. It surpasses all other chemicals, chemical strategies anywhere. Nothing comes close to its ambition, its breadth, its depth of thinking, or its ability to transform the chemical enterprise to something different, something vastly different and healthier compared to today's. October 14th, 2020 is our equivalent of 15 June 1215, the day the battle for the Magna Carta began the day the rebel barons began to struggle to deprive a very unpopular and tyrannical king of his divine rights. There were twists and turns in the historic struggle to get the Magna Carta truly installed, but ultimately it prevailed. There will be twists and turns in our efforts to accomplish a truly successful implementation of the CSS, but we too can and must prevail. Oh, I already did that, sorry. These are today's non-communicable epidemics brought in part by chemical exposures, especially to endocrine disrupting compounds. Look at those, That's, those are today's epidemics of non-communicable diseases. We suffer from them and more because the chemical enterprise was excellent, superb at designing new materials that did miraculous things at an affordable cost and made vast fortunes off of their, their inventiveness. But the chemical enterprise sucked, sucked, a technical term, at asking, will there be health consequences if we deploy these inventions willy-nilly? Biomedical science moved too slowly to stop that assault, or even to realize how horrific were some of the consequences going to be. With the 21st century biomedical discoveries, we are now revealing how seriously that mismatch between the pace of chemical inventiveness and the health externalities it can cause. The CSS will position the European Union very strongly in global competition to lead the world towards safe and sustainable chemicals. It embraces, and this is really important for me, it embraces 21st century biomedical science at its core, not 16th century, long refuted dogma, still worshiped by the US Food and Drug Administration and most other regulators. Having that at its core will lead to bans and replacements of hundreds if not thousands of chemicals, 
in current use because of their hazardous characteristics. It recognizes that a safe and sustainable chemistry will spur chemical innovation, not retard it. It challenges other countries to fierce competition for the growing market for safe, safer materials. Now, I want to make a series of bold predictions. If we are successful, what's life going to be like in Europe? If other nations don't quickly move in the same directions, their health will continue to decline with some of those pandemics that are with us today, but Europeans will become much healthier. Costs of healthcare will stop spiraling out of control. It will reverse decades of falling sperm count and other infertility problems. Population declines will return towards stability. Couples who want their grandchildren to make babies the old fashioned way, they will immigrate from their home, home somewhere else in the world to Europe and artificial reproductive technologies will become a distant memory. Parents seeking children without neurological disorders will join in this emigration. Parents hoping to avoid cancers in their children will too. The epidemics of diabetes and obesity will reverse. Feminization of fish in European rivers will disappear. Population declines in diverse wildlife species around the globe will reverse and much more. That's what implementing the chemical strategy for sustainability can achieve. It won't happen overnight. It will happen over generations. Some problems will reverse faster than others, some slower. I get goosebumps imagining that that is possible. If the chemical strategy, strategy for sustainability is implemented as currently planned. Many people have worked on this for, for well over a decade. Scientists, advocates, policymakers, the sorts of people you were trying to encourage to be strong. It has been a privilege of a lifetime for me to take part in this effort. I have chaired a conference call, now on Zoom, every other Thursday for over a decade with scientists and policy advocates from both sides of the Atlantic on behalf of the Endocrine Society, the world's largest professional association of endocrinologists. They know their stuff. The unwavering goal of this work has been to ensure that endocrinological science, specifically on endocrine disruption, is part of the strategies, the CSS's DNA and epigenome. We focused on endocrine disruption and endocrine science because the range of health effects, as you saw in that chart of today's pandemics, the range of health effects associated with EDCs is driving really horrible health conditions because EDC exposure is ubiquitous and its consequences are manifest at exposure levels that are beneath the usual levels considered by toxicologists, traditional toxicologists, especially regulatory toxicologists. We also focused on what it would take to mainstream safe and sustainable chemistry. When Franz Timmerman, executive vice president, announced on October 14th, 2020, we were, to say the least, elated. The far-reaching vision of the chemical strategy for sustainability fully acknowledged the importance of the endocrine science, of, of endocrine science and also embraced plans for how to design and implement a path forward toward safe and sustainable chemis chemistry. Contrary to critics' opinions, this, this plan will stimulate a new era of innovation in the chemical enterprise. And because Europe has had the foresight and the imagination to take on this challenge, 
Europe will be the epicenter of that revolution. Now, I also want to make uh, some short comments about a related development in regulatory policy, which is the, uh, the European Food Safety Authority published its finding uh, earlier this year that the tolerable daily intake of bisphenol A should be reduced by a factor of 20,000-fold. Not 20-fold, not 200-fold, not 2,000-fold, 20,000-fold. That's a huge change. EDC scientists and experts on BPA have been working for change of this, uh, a change of this magnitude for well over a decade. There are several people in this room that contributed directly to that science. EDC scientists and experts on BPA have been working for change of this ma magnitude. And in fact, university-based BPA scientists who participated in the largest ever comprehensive study of BPA called BPA or Clarity BPA which was funded by the U.S. National Institute of Health, uh, of Environmental Health Sciences, had reached a very similar conclusion several years before that the t t tolerable daily intake should be reduced by a factor of 20,000. Same, roughly the same calculation coming from two different sources. It's pretty extraordinary. EFSA's ex experts in releasing this opinion concluded that European people with average and high exposures, average levels and high levels of exposure to BPA already exceed the new tolerable daily intake. Their health is already at risk and most likely already being harmed. Now this conclusion, 20,000 fold reduction in TDI, has implications far beyond BPA. Led by the US FDA's refusal to acknowledge the reality of very low doses, very low dose effects of EDCs, this pivot by the EFSA should lead to reductions in the TDIs of many other chemicals. And it's those sorts of changes in chemical policy that are being driven by the Chemical Strategy for Sustainability, coupled with the, 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 S, the CSS's commitment to invest the monies that are required to stimulate finding solutions through safe and sustainable chemistry that will allow that set of changes that seemed, seem almost impossible to imagine could happen in Europe. But I am convinced that they will if we implement the CSS as it has currently been strategized. Um, and I want you to imagine what a future like that would be like. Thank you. Pete, thank you very much. Do you have a seat? Yes. I get the impression you're quite keen on the chemical strategy for sustainability. All of us in the United <laughs> States are, all of us who understand this issue, are jealous to the extreme. If I were younger, if childbearing age, I would move to Europe. Now, you're working in an NGO that's all about trying to make sure that people understand and uh, you know the, these the environmental health impacts of chemicals. Yes. I, I'm, I'm just curious, do you, do you think that, that enough people know about what is possible if we were to fully implement the CSS to, to, to give people, to equip them so that they can either demand change in forthcoming democratic processes or see the opportunities um, in, in, in the future for One moving to Europe, for example. As we have been involved in these conference calls and Zoom calls across the pond for the last over a decade, every other week, one of the most heartening features of those calls are discussions of how the European Parliament votes when EDCs are on the ballot. And it's typically 80 to 88%. In the United States, it would never even get on the ballot. So in the US, for whatever reason, uh, we've not been as effective as you all have been, you especially, in making these issues 
common knowledge and part of the culture. So thank you. Can I follow up on, on the question of innovation? Um, the Green Deal wasn't only about trying to reduce emissions and restrict certain practices, it was also seen as a, a motor for innovation and economic competitiveness. I mean, do you see that the s chemical strategy for sustainability can perform the same sort of role? And, and in which areas it, do you see it as having the greatest potential when it comes to the stimulating innovation? Actually, that very goal is embedded within the CSS. Its goal, one of its goals, complementing the goal to ban things that are not essential, for which there are replacements, or figure out how to replace things, is, is using, as you said in your question to her, uh, regulation can stimulate innovation. But we, don't, we, we have much more than regulation stimulating innovation. The growth of the market for safe and sustainable materials is huge, and it's only going to grow bigger and provide more stimulus for to, to accomplish those goals. My last question to you is, is you, you're almost an, an evangelist, I would say, for how things are done in the EU, could be done if we were to really follow through on this chemical strategy for sustainability. But what about the other parts of the world? What can, I mean, you've talked about that it's, it's difficult in, in the States. There are administrative issues with taking on board the, the, the relevant and latest science. There are issues in terms of you know, whether the democratic institutions are also functioning to take this on board. Are there other examples of how you see that the, what's done in, in, the Europe, in Europe can be something of a, a load star for other parts of the world? That's exactly how I see what's happening in Europe. They are going to become the most competitive population block in the world for moving forward on these things. And if other countries, other regions don't pick it up, they're going to get lost in the dust. That's, I'm convinced of that. Thank you very much, Pete. Uh, quite an optimistic uh, talk there.